How's it going producer? Talis here and today we'll talk about mixing, how to create depth and space in your songs. I'll show you a few different ways to achieve that from the perspective of a music producer based on what I learned over the years in my own productions and by studying the top audio engineers in this world. So what's depth in a song? Well, it's an illusion creating the illusion that some sounds are closer to the speakers and others are far away in the back. And that's how your songs will sound huge. And I don't mean up and down like the low frequencies of a bass and high frequencies of a hi-hat. What I mean is front and back, like a pop vocal almost talking in your ear as opposed to a warm keyboard sound way in the background. And that's kind of hard to notice when you're beginning to mix your songs, as we tend to mix either everything too dry and in your face, or everything washed out in reverb at first. It's not so obvious like panning, where you can just place the vocals in the center, a synthesizer sound on the left speaker, and a guitar on the right speaker, and boom, you have width. But that's only one dimension. A song is a lot more interesting when we play with the other dimensions. Why would you limit yourself and not use all the space available in the mix to help paint a landscape in your listeners' minds? Your songs would lose lots of opportunities to create contrast and impact. By the way, that illusion of depth can only be created because of contrast. The only way for us to perceive a sound as placed far from the speaker is by also hearing sounds that seem closer. So we need that reference point. We need a balance of close instruments and distant instruments to actually achieve depth. And even though this is less intuitive, once you start noticing these subtleties, you can easily apply the tricks I'll show you to create depth in your songs. So whenever you're mixing, ask yourself, how close or far away do I want this sound to be from the listener? Do I want proximity and intimacy or do I want to place this in the background for texture? Listen to this in your face melody and some in your face chords and they're fighting because they're in the same space. I purposely use the same synthesizer preset for both of them so they would really clash. And now the same melody and chords, but I changed four things on the chords to place them far away from you. So what were the four things I changed to make these chords sound like they're coming from your neighbor's house party instead of your own speakers? How do you achieve this in your songs? Number one and most obvious change was the intensity. I reduced the volume by 5 decibels. If a dog barks in the distance, you hear it much quieter than you would if the dog was barking in front of you, right? Distant sounds are perceived quieter, so use those faders. The second way to place sounds in the background is by cutting some brightness. I don't know if this situation ever happened in your life where you could hear a party with loud music going on a few blocks away from your house and you could only distinguish the bass and kick drums, but not the other elements of the songs. Not trying to get too technical, but we hear less high end from distant sounds because the frequency of a wave is inversely proportional to its length. So high frequencies don't travel as far as low frequencies like the bass. Therefore, it makes sense that if you want to play some instrument in the back of your mix, distant from the listener, they shouldn't have too much energy in the high frequencies. So you can scoop out some highs on your EQ with a shelf or a low pass filter to push those things further away in the mix. If everything is too bright in your mix, then they're all up close and there's no depth. Here's the EQ curve I applied in our example. Let's mess with it. Now 
Did you notice how, as I decreased the high frequencies, it sounded like it was getting more and more distant from you? Now, besides equalization and volume, there's also ambience and reflections. We can use effects like reverbs and delays, and those will also create width, as you can have things like ping pong delays bouncing from left to right, and stereo reverbs. But what I really want to focus on today is the front to back relationship and that's closely connected to a parameter in your reverb called pre-delay, which means you can add a time gap between the dry sound and the reverb sound. By setting up only a few milliseconds of pre-delay, you can make sure that the original dry, unaffected sound of whatever instrument you're mixing will reach the listener before the reflections, the reverb sound. There is a separation, and that creates the sense of a large space, but the instrument still appears to be close to the listener because of that separation. If you were to remove the pre-delay entirely, then there's no separation. You hear the instrument and the reflection at the same time. And if the reverb is loud enough, it kind of seems like you're listening to the reflections only. And that's what makes it sound like it's placed in the back of the speakers. So for example, when I'm mixing pop music, I usually want the vocals up front, in your face, almost jumping out of the speakers. And that's why I make sure to set up a reverb with enough pre-delay where the dry vocals arrive sooner than the reverb. It makes sense to set up a long pre-delay and keep the reverb quiet in comparison to the dry signal. The longer the pre-delay, the more upfront the vocals will sound without losing the ambience effect. But for an instrument that I just want to place in the background, like the synthesizer for more example, then I can use a louder reverb without any pre-delay. And that's what I did to that synth. Let's take a look at the reverb. And the last thing I did was to shape the transients with compression to remove the attacks because sounds with strong transients also give us the impression of being closer and instruments with smooth transients don't sound as close. A compressor with fast attack is a good way to squeeze those transients and push things to the back of the speakers. Here's mine and I'll use the scope and shaper box so we can visualize it. If you have trouble hearing transients, it's always good to have access to a scope like the one from ShaperBox 2. One more time for comparison, let's hear the chords without any effects. And the chords placed in the background. Remember, it's all about contrast. Something has to be placed close so you can notice how far something else is. You perceive it as far away because you're listening to my drums and melody up close. And there's many ways to get creative with this effect to enhance your productions, alright? So the easy way to create depth in your music is by asking yourself, which sounds don't deserve the spotlight and should be placed in the background? And you can achieve that by 
decreasing the volume, cutting high frequencies, adding reflections like a reverb with no pre-delay or a very short pre-delay, and lastly, squeezing the transients. It can be done to any instrument, vocal effect or drum sound. If that's not enough in your song, then look at the other instruments and make sure they're the opposite of that, so you have your contrast. Also, if your song's arrangement is already very busy, you can use a delay instead of reverb because it takes less space in the mix so it won't get muddy and cluttered. Sound good? Now, if you learned something today, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on the next ones. Don't forget to like the video. I know it's one more click before you can go back to your doll, and it's a pain, but it helps me a lot. I'm Thales, thank you for hanging out, and we'll talk soon.